Okay, uh, since we talked a bit about myself, my name is Li Ying, right here. Some of you asked me what year I'm in, which program I'm in. I graduated already. Uh, I graduated in 2020, April, and I finished double major in math and chemistry, and I finished a minor in biology. So that's something about me. Uh, I don't know, what else do you wanna know? Oh, I'm TA in, for this semester, I'm TA in 244, which is ODE 236 vector calculus, and also 402, which is, what's 402? Oh, classic geometry, okay? And this is my second time TA in this course. Uh, many of you know that I was TA in 102 for two years, so TA did six times already, but I don't want to do it again. Uh, so personally, I prefer proofs over computation because it's more fun, but well, we can do uh, computation as well. Can undergrad TA in second year or third year? Yes, a lot of TAs are in second or third year. Any other question? How's math 402? Math 402, okay, this course is pretty boring at UTM. Uh, if you wanna take it, take it at St. George. It's much more fun at St. George. Uh, if you're interested in 402, I suggest you to take 301 before you take it because uh, 402 at, at UTM has a lot of groups and symmetries. So make sure you take 301 before you take it. Not many undergrad students in a lot of other subjects like physics. Uh, when would that be a good time to apply? Well, you can apply after first year, I think, yeah. Like summertime after first year, it's a good time to apply. I mean, uh, okay, any other question for me? before we start the actual stuff. No? What is the easiest third year math course? Uh, personally, I think the easiest one is Math 301. And <laughs> through one, sorry, Ali, through one and three, four, four is pretty easy as well. Uh, but you know that St. George has some like math, math history courses. So I've never taken those, but they might be really easy as well if you're good at writing. Anyway, let's start. So today we're going to talk about introduction to differential equations. DE stands for differential equations, solutions to ordinary differential equations, and then directly integrable differential equations. Uh, hopefully I'm not ahead of your lecture, but I might be, but it should be okay. Anyway. So introduction to differential equations. Let's look at the definition. Oh, by the way, the color coding of my worksheet is usually blue stands for definition. Um, yellow is examples. And um, we don't have red here, but later we'll see some red uh, boxes. And those stands for theorems, corollaries, such things. So definition, an equation containing the derivatives of one or more dependent variables with respect to one or more independent variables is called a differential equation. So what does this mean is that we are talking about the derivatives, okay? So unlike the equations we've seen before, let's for example, 
let's say uh, 3y plus 2x equals to 6. Okay, for example, this equation is not the differential equation. Okay, we need at least one derivative. So this is really important. We need to contain the derivative of one or more dependent variables. So you need to have at least one of the derivative of your y, okay? So those are the examples of differential equations. So you'll see that we have dy over dx, okay? That's why it's a differential equation. Also, you can write y prime prime, which is a second derivative of uh, y. Another thing is that in last semester's quiz, the professor used this notation and a lot of people got confused, which is this. And you put one here. What does that mean? Anyone know? First derivative, okay? So that's first derivative, which means that if they have this or something similar y to let's say five, this is a fifth derivative. If they have something like this in the equation, that's a differential equation as well. Yes, it is the same as dy over dx, exactly. Okay, so they can test you something about this. Make sure when you see this, you you know that this means a derivative. Anyway, for classification, we have two types of differential equations. We have ODE, which stands for ordinary differential equations. PDE stands for partial, der partial differential equations. The difference between them is that your derivative, so those are all ODE because you're taking the full derivative. When you take partial derivative, such as, let's say, uh, dz over alpha z over alpha x. Okay, so if you see something like this, you're only taking the partial derivative of a dependent variable and that equation you have is going to be PDE. In this course, we only care about ODE. If you want to learn PDE, the course code is Math 311, which is a continuation of this course. Okay? Any questions so far? No? Okay, cool. Uh, the second thing is that you need to know the order of a differential equation. So the order of a differential equation is the highest derivative, the order of the highest derivative. Okay, and the third thing I put it here, but you don't need to know this now, because last semester when I teach students this, I realized I never teach them this properly. So I'll leave the definition here. You can read it if you are interested, but you don't need to know this. Now let's look at some examples. I want you to classify the following differential equations. Are they ODE or PDE? And what order are they? Okay, you can. Okay, so first question, do we have any PDE here? Yes or no? No? Okay. So they are all ODE. Okay. Now uh, I'll give you some time to think about it. What order are they? Okay. And once you have your answer, you can type in the chat. For example, you think it's first order, second order, first order, second order, then you can type one, two, one, two. Similar things like that. Okay. And let's see.
I'll wait for another minute. Uh, and let's see if there is any different answer. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, uh, all of you are correct. It is 2423. All right, so the first one, where exactly can you see that it's a second order? Are we checking this or are we checking this? The second one, okay? Yes. So because this, this derivative is a second derivative, that makes, and that's the highest derivative, that makes the whole equation second order. The second one, because this one is the highest order, okay? And it has order four, so this is the fourth order. Wait. The third one, we have this as well, so it's second order. And the last one, we have this, which is the highest derivative. So we have third order. All right, any questions? So far, should be really simple. Any question at all? Okay, if no question, it's, if no question, then type your favorite emoji in the chat so that I know I can move on. Yes, for all OG functions, we look for the highest order, exactly, okay? Nice, nice. Okay, next solution is your differential equation. So this is the proper definition. So any solution, phi is a solution to your nth order given differential equation. If it is defined on an interval and it has at least n derivatives that are continuous on the interval, also we sub into the differential equation and reduce it to an identity. So in this case, we see we say uh, this function satisfies the differential equation. However, in this course, here is my remark. In this course, you don't need to check the first two uh, conditions. They probably didn't even tell you the first two conditions, but uh, as I mentioned, I'm all about proof, so I wanna be rigorous. Those two are in the definition as well. You don't need to know, but I just wanna show you, okay? So basically, uh, if they ask you to check if something is a solution of a differential equation, you just need to plug it back in. So if they have the first derivative and you take the first derivative, they have the second derivative and then you take that and plug it back in. If your left hand side and right hand side are equal, then, then we know that it is a solution. So here is an example. Okay, so basically you only need to do this for this course. Let's look at this example. Uh, I'll give you a bit time to work on this and we'll take care of that. Again, when you are done, you can show me your favorite emoji so I know that we can take it up.
Is that why, um, where exactly are you talking about? We haven't taken this in lecture. I know, I know. Well, one of the lectures is slower than the other one, but your professors want me to take this. Oh, this is x squared times y, the second derivative of y. So x squared y prime prime. Again, uh, for those of you who hasn't learned it yet, basically you just need to, you need to verify those two. So what you need to do is you take, you see that you need y prime prime here, you need y prime here. So you take the first and second derivative of this and you plug those back in and see if you can get back to long x. That's how you do this question, okay? It's pretty simple. I'm pretty sure you can all do this. Okay, I'm gonna write my solution down, uh, but don't look at the screen yet. Try it yourself. Practice taking derivatives. Time to do 135.
Oops. Right, so um, I'm done writing. Let's take it up. Hopefully, everyone finished your own work. All right, so let's look at this. As I mentioned before, uh, we need to since we need y prime prime here and y prime here, we need to take the first and second derivative of y one. So that's what I did. The first derivative of y one is one minus one over x. The second derivative of y1 is 1 over x squared. Now you can sub those back into the ODE. You'll get x squared times this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, the rest is just computation. And eventually, if you can get back to your right-hand side, which is long x, then you show that this is a solution to the ODE. Similarly, for y2, you take the first and second derivative plug them back into the ODE, okay? And uh, if you can get the X, which is your right-hand side, then you can say that this is a solution to the ODE. Any question? Thank you. Any question? Okay, if no more question, let's do the next one. Okay, show that this uh, y is a solution to this unreal number. Again, I'll give you a bit time to work on this and um, we'll take it up. So this part basically just need to know 135. There's nothing more. Again, once you're down, uh, show me your favorite emoji or show me, I don't know, your favorite number, your favorite color, anything is okay. Just let me know you're down, okay? Oh, by the way, anyone here is colorblind? Uh, you can DM me. The, if you can't see what I'm writing, then let me know. I'll change your color. Okay, nobody, everyone's good? Everyone can see what I'm writing? Or do you prefer me using another color? Okay, I see some people like blue. 
green. Okay, we'll, we'll try to use other colors later. I like green too, to be honest. Green is my favorite color. Okay, some of you like blue, let's use blue to highlight them. Uh, and let's use green as well. Okay, they cancel out, so we get zero, which is right hand side. So therefore, y equals to this is indeed a solution. Okay, any question? Green is your least favorite color? Oh, wow, ouch, ouch for green. Blue is nice, purple, you like purple? Okay, I'm using purple right now. Any question though? Can we move on? All good, okay, nice. If all good, let's look at the next one. Okay, go slightly harder, but still pretty easy. Uh, next topic, we'll talk about directly integrable differential equation. Uh, as I said here, they are the easiest type of differential equation to solve. And they are first order. There's a typo here. It should be order. And they are ODE. Okay. Uh, basically, you have derivative on one side and only independent variable on the other side. So uh, the format is basically dy over dx equals to f of x. So on this side, it can only be a function of x. Okay, so if you see something like this, so something like this, for example, uh, we have dy over dx equals to x squared, dy over dx equals to cosine x plus e to the power of x, uh, y prime equals to one over x, dy over dx, dy over dt equals to one over one plus t squared. So if you see those type of the ODE in this form, then what you can do is just integrate both sides. Okay, so it's really simple, just integrate both sides. Um, here is an example, solve the following ODE. So I'll give you Again, I'll give you a little bit time to work on this and then we'll pick it up. So now it's 136 time. Again, once you're done, show me something you like in the chat and then we'll pick it up. Uh, I see some of you are done already. Let's do this. Since it's, the material is really easy, let's do this. 
um, I'll let you guys be able to write to annotate. So I'll let you guys be able to write on the screen. And if you are done, you can share as your solution. Yeah, everyone can annotate now. So uh, click annotate and pick a color start to write your solution down. Don't copy each other. Okay, I see we have three identical solution. I guess I don't need to. Yeah, I guess I don't need to uh, take it out. So basically, you just need to take integral on both sides. I'll still write it down. Uh, all of you are correct. Uh, but now I'm going to erase yours so I can write. Actually, I don't need to erase yours. I'll just write it down here. Let's use a different color since you guys like blue let's pick a blue anyone else forget the c sometimes i do i sometimes forget about the c you're not alone so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take integral on both sides by the way you need to show your work guys uh can i just do what you're doing here show me an answer you need to show your work in order to get full mark okay so this will give you y equals to sine x plus one over two e to the 2x plus c. Okay, so this is your final answer. <laughs> remove the notations, I'll remove the notations, it's all right. Okay, any other question? Seems like I have a really active tutorial. No? Okay, let's move on. This is the last question, I think. Yeah, so this tutorial was really easy. It's just chilling, nothing hard. Initial value problem. Basically, we have initial value problem because here we have a constant here, we don't know what it is. So if you want to know what the C is, you need to be given an initial value, an initial condition, okay? So for example, if you have dy over dx, like here, then they need to tell you what is y of zero or x naught, like here. If they have second derivative, like uh, if they have second derivative here, then they need to tell you y prime of zero equals to something as well for you to figure out what your c is okay so if they give you initial condition those type of problems are called initial value problem or ivp any question for this definition i think it's pretty simple if not okay uh this is example six. Again, 
uh, you can try first and then write on a board or you can write on a board right now as well. So I'll give you time to shine, to flex on everyone else. Take a color and write on a board. Nice, nice. All of you got it correct. Uh, yes, they're all good, except whoever wrote in black, I need to correct one small mistake, uh, which is, let me draw, which is here, okay? When we take integration, here you should add the X here as well. I don't know if you can see I'm writing here. Yeah, so a tiny mistake, but everything else is really good. Uh, do you guys need me to write? I don't think you need me to write it down. We have three different solutions already. So uh, this is often a pretty good. Anyway, uh, that is the end of the tutorial. Uh, I think your homework is due next week, next Monday or something i don't know but um, i'm pretty sure you can start working on your homework already i had a look it's pretty simple so after this tutorial hopefully you i think you can is it written on paper you could read it write it on paper and then submit with the aquama i'm not sure it's open for me but i'm not sure if it's open for you but you can start working on this. And when it's open, you can submit it. Yeah, but you can start working on this. Anyway, hopefully after this tutorial, you can uh, start your assignment. Uh, well, uh, we had this meeting today, right before the tutorial, uh, talking about grading. Uh, and the professor or instructor asked, how are we gonna split the grading? And I was like, oh, if 
all the assignments have only three questions and we can split them evenly. One, uh, each of us do mark one question. So uh, she agreed that it's a good idea. So because of that, I think the rest of the assignments will only have three questions as well. But she can give you parts. Yeah, that's all I can say. Anyway, uh, have a good week. Uh, good luck on your courses. Yes, yes. What's your question?